here he comes, even as we speak. Uh, first item in the agenda is the call of meeting to order. Second item is the acceptance of the agenda. So, second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Next is walk-in. Norman? <clears throat> During this past budget cycle up at the State House, they <coughs> initiated all kinds of new taxes. Uh, you probably know that the sales tax went from 5 to 6.25. What you didn't probably hear was that they added an escrow tax, an excise tax rather, to everybody who has satellite television. <coughs> and they did it uh, just to collect the money for no other reason. Uh, Comcast had been lab uh, lobbying for some time uh, about how unfair it was that they paid the franchise fee and satellite TV didn't pay anything. And that probably had something to do with it. But in the last analysis, uh, it was the fact that they got a, a chance to get some of that money and put it in the general fund. Now most excise taxes, if not all of the ones that I've been able to find, have a reason for their being. You pay an excise tax on your car when it goes through roads and bridges. You can track the reason that that extra tax is there. But there's absolutely no reason uh, in this bill that I can see where that money is dedicated anywhere but the general fund. And I thought I would write an amendment and give it a reason. And uh, I thought that that money, since uh, like the Comcast uh, franchise fee, goes back to the cities and towns to support uh, cable access and to support uh, internet access, that we would have that money come back to the cities and towns and uh, hopefully we'd do the same thing with it and uh, add to the, uh, the dissemination of information from the town. Hopefully maybe we can get these meetings on cable. Not uh, but on the internet, not just on TV. So what you're suggesting, if I may, sure. what you're suggesting then is, is uh, you're bringing this to our attention. Right. What can we do? I think it's a great idea. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think it's well, a what, win for the what, town. As well. What I'm looking for is support. Yep. If you would write a letter from the board to uh, Garrett Bradley's filing it. Doesn't have a bill number just yet, but should any day now. And uh, what we need is, is as much support from the local cities and towns to lobby this money, to extract it out of the general fund and bring it back to the cities and towns. That's basically where the money is generated. How long do you think before we get a bill number on it? So right I would say within, a, within days. The reason I'm bringing it up, and I'll just open it up to the board afterwards, just to, if you would write something, all right, a letter that we could write to uh, Bradley Cantwell, and we could send it off to, as a sample, to everyone in Plymouth County. Sure. And ask them to join us. But quite often we get letters from different towns asking us to join us in a particular mm -hmm. endeavor. You know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, sure. to do that, so. Anything from the board? Or? Oh, that makes sense, and I think <clears throat> opening it up to other towns and trying to encourage those towns to participate and to seek uh, their um, representatives to, to support it makes sense, North. If we could do that, it would be great. If you do that, if you want to wait until the bill number comes out, fine. If you but don't... It, it's easier to generate yep. a letter yeah. once it has a bill number. Once you yep. identify it. Yeah. You can specify exactly what you're talking yep. about. Okay. Go for it. Thank yep. you, Um... <clears throat> Next is the temporary closure of Front Street for the Santa Stroll. <coughs> Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the request of Situate Community Christmas <coughs> to close Front Street to vehicular traffic from the Beaver Dam Road, Jericho Road intersection to South Coastal Bank, opposite Brook Street, from 9.45 a.m. to approximately 10.30 a.m. for the annual Santa Stroll in accordance with all conditions set by the Police and Fire Departments. Second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, discussion? Uh, I'll abstain on this. Yeah. It's in past years. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a great event. What what day is it? Um, the 5th? I think it's the uh, Saturday after the Saturday, uh, Saturday December 5th. Weekend. 
Is it? That's not even the motion. No, it's not in the motion. So it's Saturday, December seventh. Fifth. 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 Saturday, December fifth. Great event. I think Santa comes in on a boat or something. He does, I believe. Absolutely. And, uh, I believe he goes does. Down Front Street. Trisha, this would be your first year. You got to check it out. Yes. It's something to see. Yes, sir. <laughs> me. Uh, thank you. Uh, next is. It's really cool. Seawalt, David, 181 Turner to three, <coughs> three Rebecca Road, out of Cedar Point. If you just introduce yourself for the records, gentlemen. David Ball, 44 Rebecca Road, president of the Cedar Point Association. Richard Walsh, uh, 11 Lighthouse Road, resident. And we also have uh, with us tonight Maureen Neary, who's sitting right in back of me. She's the vice president of the Cedar Point Association, and Steve Burlow, who's also a member. A couple of weeks ago, we sent to the board uh, an information packet um, that details our concerns, and you also received a you know, PowerPoint program uh, showing the condition of the seawall. Uh, so tonight, I appreciate you letting us come in and, and uh, discuss this a little bit further. I, I do have a few things that I want to pass by the board. Uh, yesterday, I met with Al Bangert uh, regarding this particular seawall. It was a productive meeting. Uh, we discussed the problems of funding seawall repairs. Um, he um, showed me the last evaluation of seawalls that was done by Vine Associates. That was done in 2007. <coughs> so it's going on almost three years at this point. Uh, even a cursory review of that report uh, was fairly shocking to me, frankly, <coughs> because uh, it included pictures of this particular section of seawall. And the change that has taken place between 2007 and today is, is, is stunning. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of deterioration that has taken place since the 2007 <coughs> report. Um, and as we stated in the information packet to the Board of Selectmen recently, uh, we had a seawall contract to give the association uh, a ballpark estimate as to what it would take to do repairs to this particular section of seawall to buy five years of time for the town. Uh, this is a contractor that has done a lot of work in situate and across the South Shore. So he has some experience in this kind of, kind of situation. Uh, he gave us an estimate of just under $50,000 to uh, do the repairs that he felt would get the town five more years out of this wall before something more major would have to be done. We're not frankly looking, we're trying to, we're trying to find ways for the town to, to get this work done without spending uh, a tremendous amount of money because to replace this particular section of the wall probably would be, my, my off the top of my head guess would be one to two million dollars. It would be huge. Uh, I've had several discussions with Representative Jim Cantwell. Uh, the most recent was last night. I've also had several discussions with an aide to uh, Representative Gary Bradley. And both of them are saying that they would like the Board of Select <coughs> to, as soon as possible, write letters to them um, explaining what the problem is, not only with this particular seawall, but all seawall repair work in situ. When I had a, my last discussion with Jim Campbell last night, he felt that there there may be some state money that could be available. There was at least a ray of hope. Uh, in discussions I had with him this summer, uh, he was less hopeful than he, than he was last night. Um, I guess my biggest frustration with the, with the situation is getting everyone to understand that this, protect, this particular section of seawall um, protects a hundred plus houses past that point. Every house from the south end of this particular seawall out to the lighthouse uh, relies on this particular section of seawall for both <coughs> egress. Obviously, if something happened to the wall because the area is so narrow in that particular section, emergency vehicles would have no hope of getting into that into that area. Um, it's a safety issue for the for the public. Uh, it's a heavily traveled area. I think everyone's aware that on many weekends throughout the year, there are hundreds of people that go out to the lighthouse um, 
and all that could be put in jeopardy if something happened. The other big concern that I have is that if something did happen to this section of wall, there's really nothing that could be done that I could imagine. There's some parts of town where if you lose a seawall, at least you can, you can put in temporarily large stone and you, you have some chance of breaking up the, the wave action before it gets to something else. That's not possible here. And I think, I think you know what I'm talking about after you've, after you've taken a look at that, that PowerPoint program. So this is what we're asking that happens at this point. I'd like to see the board write letters seeking state support for funding their share. They're supposed to be funding their share of seawall construction repairs, and they have not been. I'd like that letter to go out to Representative Cantwell, Bradley, and Senator Hedl. I would also hope that the Board of Selectmen could, as a group, go on site to that seawall and meet with us <coughs> as soon as possible so that you can visually see what's taking place. A couple of the members of the board have been out there in the past few months, but I think even since they are out there, they'd see fairly deterioration. And lastly, um, having my discussion with, with Al yesterday, my concern is that if the new seawall evaluation is not done until late next spring, then it's going to be another year before anything much happens. Uh, he indicated to me that he thought that the update of the seawall uh, inspections would not be an extreme cost for the town. And that needs to be done. It's over two years old now. And what we'd like to see happen is to, is to have the structural engineers that do this evaluation tell us if our concern is valid, that if this wall were to fail, it's going to be a disaster. And then if that is the case, we would hope that the Board of Selectmen would include some repair costs for this particular section of seawall in the uh, capital budget for an annual meeting coming up next year. Okay, I have uh, handed out, <coughs> thanks David, I have handed out, uh, I was going to bring this up under other business at the end of the night, but this is certainly more apropos now. Uh, a presentation or suggestion prepared by a situate resident, Jim Bailey, which I think you're familiar with, David. You're, I spoke to him yep. less than an hour ago. This is, did you, this is more long-term, uh, ongoing than what you're talking about, but I gave this to the board members. I gave it to Al. I gave it to Tricia. I asked Al to look it over. He gave a cursory look to it. Uh, prior to the meeting and said it thought it looked good. I asked him to go through it and edit it wherever he felt it was necessary and get back to us uh, with his thoughts. Long range, okay, ongoing. Not necessarily uh, dealing with your particular problem right now, but I just wanted to get down on the table. Uh, as far as your situation is concerned, and I'll open it up to the board in a second. I don't think we'll have any problem at all writing letters to the representatives. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. I just hope the letters have some effect. Uh, sometimes we write these letters and you don't yeah, get... Yeah, we're well aware of that. Yeah. I mean, writing <coughs> letters is uh, maybe the easy part. Yeah. But I think if the town keeps putting the pressure on... Fine. Yeah, uh, agreed. I mean, the stimulus money that doesn't seem to be being spent, uh, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot of issues on the state level. And mm -hmm. from my understanding of the situate problem is that the state has not come through with the, with the money that really is, they're supposed to for their share of the uh, repairs that uh, were approved by FEMA. Mm -hmm. So it's holding everything up. Yeah, money is certainly a problem. I, less than a month ago, I think Al came to us. Our town meeting passed funding for, for a three or four places or half dozen places along the coast, seawall repair, and we couldn't even go forward with it because there was no money. You know, this, we, had put, we had appropriated our money, but the state didn't come through with their share. So that's the problem. That's why I think, you know, it's the one thing to say, well, you know, we'll get it done. The reps will say we'll get it done, but the fact of the matter is we're still waiting on money that, I think the other, the, the other very important thing is that 
the uh, town does an update on that uh, seawall evaluation. Mm -hmm. And I would hate yep. to see that not happen until next May or June. And yep. then it's too late because yep. then you, you have no clue as to what the needs are like this one. Um, and then it's another year away. And yep. You've talked to Al about it. So, yeah, I, I did talk yeah. to Al about it. He didn't give me a dollar amount, but he, he indicated <coughs> to me that it wouldn't be a, a huge <coughs> Board, open up, yeah. Sean. Uh, I was just going to say, is Jim Cantwell seen? Does he know how this situation is unique compared to other seawalls? He will by tomorrow because it, that was put in the mail to him today. Uh, Garrett Bradley received it yesterday. Uh, it's going out to uh, Bob Hedlund tomorrow. I just wanted to, I, I, they're all important, but this and, one will. Jim, <coughs> I know I had, I've, I've had probably more discussions with Jim Cantwell than the other two. I'm going to explain to him as best I could and try to have him visualize the area and, and the problem of that narrow section of road and then the house, the number of houses past that one. Yeah. I think he's familiar enough with the area to, to know it, but he'll see it on that PowerPoint program. Perfect. Well. Good. That was my thought. Go yeah, on. no, um, <clears throat> Dave, thanks for coming, Richard, and also Steve. I know um, we've talked in the past. I've visited it. I'll be more than happy to go back down again. As I said to you before, um, is that obviously relying on state funds is not necessarily the panacea here because obviously if they can't contribute for the wall further down, I, I don't have, I'm not going to hold my breath expecting it in the future, which brings the issue to then how do we go forward and fund not just this wall, but other walls in town that have equal ratings, if not worse ratings. And um, I think, you know, I was under the impression initially that this report was from the um, foreshore protection was actually going to happen sooner, not necessarily into the spring. So I, I, I hope that we could do that because I think it's important clearly to, to see the deterioration of the walls as they presently stand. I've seen the report. It's from 2007. It's, it's now two years later. I know in the past they do it every two to three years. Um, but regardless, if there's a, um, a storm, then obviously this would, if we have the report done sooner, I would think next year we're going to be able to identify it. That storm related, maybe we can get FEMA funding, so on and so forth. Um, I think you're absolutely right. This is kind of unique uh, by comparison to other areas in town because in the event that this is um, breached, then you've got an island and then the, uh, the ability to try to get over. So there's clearly a health and safety issue. Um, I think the issue, at least from my perspective, has always been not just with this one, but how do we go forward and fund it? And um, I think um, if it's a if it's a under fifty thousand dollar fix, great. The concern I have is that we'd be putting a band aid over really a, an issue that the walls really compromised, and it really needs the two hundred thousand dollar or a or God forbid, but something even larger. Not just for this stretch, but up and down further. So. Um, I think it's imperative that we have that evaluation of that wall because before we commit any funds, if we have any funds to it, I'd right, like to make sure that the wall, the integrity of the wall is either compromised or it's solidified and therefore we should be able to go forward and, and take one of the two remedies. If it turns into a large term issue, cost wise, then I think we have to address that issue and try to determine how do we, how do, how does the town look at that in the long term you know not just this area but again we could deal with mine it we can deal with the cliffs we can deal with hummer rock so i just i think that's important but i i i think we should have an evaluation i'd like if, if the board if we could if there's any way we can encourage it to happen sooner than later i, I think that would be of of paramount concern thank you <coughs> tony sure. al <coughs> al do you know when the evaluation is planned how much it costs and your input on doing it quicker we have to receive the proposal back from our expert buying associates yet. Uh, depending upon how much that is, we may need to go out for requesting for proposals. Uh, the net of it is um, we're targeting to do the evaluation uh, in the late winter, early spring before town meeting time frame, March, April, March. And how much does it cost about? Probably uh, five to nine thousand dollars. And it's funded through your budget, DBW? Yeah, because I saw, I looked at the report. I guess, Dave, what you're suggesting is that in the two years since this report has been last done, that this wall has deteriorated more than some of the others. Because in the ranking system now, this isn't <coughs> in, the, in the lowest category. That's correct. So, <clears throat> and you think that doing it 
March, April is going to be too well, it's too late. Because too late. Because the winter storms. Tom, Tom meeting is coming up in April. Uh, so you couldn't get it funded. There's too. nothing that you can do. So you're looking at another year, and that's that's what we're so very concerned about. And and again, if this wall were to fail, it's it's similar to having something bad happen to the Edward Foster Road Bridge. What are you going to do? It, there's nothing really you can do uh, once that happens. Right. Al, did I, you? I think, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I think Al. Al, did you have something? I was just going to say that having the survey doesn't create the money. Um, I can tell you right now, we have about $5 million worth of work to do on seawalls in situ based upon the, uh, the survey that was done in uh, July of 07, and escalating that for probably addition, some additional damages and some additional costs. Uh, that, uh, at, at that time, they were looking at three, three and a half million million worth of repair work needed on our 21 miles of, of seawall. Um, say that's $5 million now. I think there's a global problem that needs to be tackled. Um, certainly this is an important area for these residents and for this part of town. There are other <coughs> areas that um, are uh, of similar importance. I think the, the opportunity to tackle the global problem is one to be taken on. And whether this is, survey is done in December or February won't change what we need to do for town meeting. So the three, <coughs> I mean, obviously funding is, is the issue. Um, state and federal money is one option, which is less likely. You can go through capital planning and put it on, on the list, as I'm sure, I hope you would do that anyways. Um, um, another option would be a betterment to the area to, f to fix that and it's like a sewer in the area to, to have the, uh, um, some group of residents pay for that repair. Um, and then the other one that Al mentioned was to to talk about some sort of override on a mass on a big big scale where we were going to get five or six million dollars to um, repair all the seawalls. So, <coughs> am I missing? I, those seem to be the only options available to fund this. Yeah, I, I guess my concern is the cost. The cost of the, the evaluation is fairly well known: five to nine thousand dollars. So in my mind, the sooner, the sooner that is done, the sooner the town has some more definitive answers than you have now. It's going to be spent in this budget cycle anyway. So why wait until April if it can be done in January or late December? You're talking about the, I'm talking about the, the survey, evaluation. right? The sooner the town has a better handle on the, for this particular wall, that's what we're right. mostly talking about. If the evaluation were to find that yes, this wall is in danger of collapse, or, or it's going to happen within the next couple of years, most likely, that that's a bad thing. Right. And something can be done with that wall within the within a probably a year's period of time that would not be extremely costly. But if it if it were to fail or breach, you've got a major major expense and no way to solve it quickly. I guess my only point is we're not we're not sitting here blind. We did just get a report <clears throat> a year and a half ago, so and it is on the list, right? I mean that that is there. So we're, we're it's 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 two, it's two years. It 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 was I don't know I don't know what month of uh, 2007 is done. My guess is the right. spring of 2007. July, July. So it's it's over two years. Right. It's two and a half years old at this point. Right. And what's shocking to the neighborhood is the change that's taken and that's why I'm I'm urging the board to take even even for those members that have seen it in June to take another look at it now mm -hmm. uh, thank you mr. chair um, I've spoken with Dave and as John Denny he said you know I've been on the site too and and I think the whole board is very sympathetic to the situation and I certainly support one sending a letter to Beacon Hill and doing anything we can do to help our friends up there expedite this um, or try to help get state support for seawall maintenance and repair uh, I'm not holding my breath on that I'm also not holding my breath on I, I don't think forty one thousand dollars or whatever that figure is is gonna even as a band-aid is necessarily going to help on the medium term um, I do support if we can move the survey as soon as possible um, not only for the reasons that Dave Ball articulated but also because I think following up on what Tony was saying here this is a large-scale problem 
and I would like to see a, a very in-depth discussion about these big scale issues that we have and big scale options that we have the betterments neighborhood by neighborhood or the uh, town-wide override um, one can argue that it really should be a betterment because it, it just immediately services those people on the cliffs or in this particular neighborhood or mine it or whatever one could also argue for a uh, town-wide override because so many people use all the beaches so many people go to the lighthouse so many people go everywhere and I think reasonable people can have very different ideas about how to move forward on this and I think it's going to be a, a big item and I'd like to see that fully fully vetted before town meeting and so I think if we have this survey done as soon as possible would help set us up for that frankly even though I completely support repairing that wall um, as soon as as possible um, and I think getting the survey will help that as well I'm most interested in the survey for addressing the the townwide global problem and there's then I think that'll come it. there's a lot of reasons to do it yeah and that's so. why I'm concerned that if it's not your able it's Tony well, I was just going to ask Al. Al, do you think over the next week or so you could look in to see what the possibility <coughs> would be to to move that date up, and what yes. the what the ramifications of that could be? We're also fortunate that that uh, the, the new town engineer Kevin Cavity has built seawalls as part of his previous life, uh, major seawalls, and has has a set, set of eyes towards these things. And we were just discussing it, and in, in order to understand more about any seawall you need to more or less take the seawall apart to see what's required to fix it so yes it's, it's not just a matter of you know, taking a look at it it's uh, drilling into it and seeing what the core looks like <coughs> however uh, we'll get um, an early answer before your next meeting to be able to tell you when we can schedule whether we can afford to and when we can schedule what resources we might need to, to do the evaluation yeah. They, they certainly corrode awfully fast. I mean, once they get to a certain <coughs> point, boom, they just kind of go past that tipping point. And that's exactly what's happened down on this on this particular I, I, I urge the board and, and, and Al, I know, and Tricia, to read this this uh, pamphlet proposal, call it what you want, that was handed out on the Seawall Committee that addresses, it, it's, it, it attempts to address what we've all been talking about, the larger scale, the big problem, federal grants <coughs> and, this, uh, and my intention would be uh, after it's uh, looked over by town administrator and Al and, and Kevin to possibly ask the board to to form a committee <coughs> this committee to do just that look at the overall seawall situation possible federal funding more than state funding and that type of thing so mm -hmm. Uh, just John just three brief points um, one is <clears throat> I you know I, I think it is a salient point which is you know being able to get into the core of these structures uh, in particular I know that one's that walls from like 19 early 1900s and so that's why I think it's imperative to, to see what the integrity of that seawall is as it stands um, and I think if as you say thanks for trying to do it sooner because reality is if we're able to put a seawall committee together that information is paramount and important for the committee to evaluate and and being able to core through not just this area but I'm sure there are other ones um, to, and I don't think that's a part of their uh, the initial evaluation but to some degree I think that's kind of imperative certainly in this stretch given the age of the wall and in any other areas of town that have that age I think it's imperative that we we as a town at least try to get into the core to, to determine the integrity of those other areas thank you Joe. <coughs> John, just Ke Kevin, do you think you uh, have the experience to do this so we wouldn't have to go out? Um, I hate to put you on the spot, spot. or anything, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> well, I, I, I was wondering if you had done that with, you know, with mod uh, or anything them, like that. Not, right. Not a complete evaluation. I right. think. Um, I mean. Everything would be, it'd be better to have a company like mine come up and do the evaluation. <laughs> That particular wall is a little tricky because it's, a, it's an old wall and somebody podged it up maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and it looks nice from the outside, but without really pouring into the sun and having the equipment to do that, you don't know what, what is on the inside, the we bar is rotted, if the mm. cement is... You know, there isn't out. any riprap in front of it? No, it's just no. a concrete wall, so it's deceiving. The front looks nice, but you on the back side, it's, it's in, in rough shape. What we'll do, David, uh, Immediately, I guess we'll we'll be send off letters to the, to the uh, representatives of the senator, uh, telling him of the seriousness of this 
particular situation to see if there's any uh, immediate money that can be sent our way to deal with it. If that's and I've assured them they'll continue to hear from us as well. I'm sure they will. Thank you. Is there anything else from the board? Anything from the sir? If you would identify yourself. Steve Barolo, 183 Turner Road. Um, Kevin and Al made a good point about not only visually looking at the seawall, but getting inside and see what's wrong with it. Um, I did take some sections of the concrete to some reputable testing labs, and they all agree without getting into a formal report, which would have generated a cost to us. They're friends of mine in the, in the industry. But they all came back with what's known as alkali silica reactivity. Mm -hmm. And basically what's happening is that wall is failing from the inside out. There's no bond left between the aggregate and the cement base. And they're blowing off the gunite that they did 10 years ago. It's that that interior of that seawall is expanding. <clears throat> and it's blowing that three inches of gunite that was put in 10 years ago. So, um, I brought some to John and showed him, and you can you can break the aggregate with your hands. That's how bad it is. And there's just no bond left. And every time it takes impact, yep. it's just crumbling. So it's yep. not going to be long before it comes yeah. down. But I can share some of that information with if you. If you would, that would be great with Kevin or Al. That would be great. Thank you. Anything else from the floor? Uh, once again, David, uh, we can write the letter, or if you would like it, uh, if you would like to draft a letter for us to sign, we'd be more than happy to do that. You'd, that way you'd cover all the points that we might miss if I try to draft it myself. And if you could get it to Kim, and Kim, Kim would put it in front of us, and we could sign it. That would make it a lot easier, I think, and uh, a lot more effective. And, <clears throat> I think and the, and the other thing I'd like, I think it's important if we can get the board down and take a look at the wall. Well, I think we'll all, we've all been down there at different times, I think, but we're more than happy to go down I again. I think it would be so. good to have everybody there at the same time. Yep. Maybe if you can just let me know when that's good for everybody. And then uh, the other thing that I'm hoping that we can do is get that evaluation done as soon as possible. We're going to try to do all that. Okay. And Thank Okay. Tony? I was just going to say, Trish, or can probably tell you when capital planning needs their stuff in by or, or Eric is should he email Eric no it's <coughs> actually in your packet yeah it's, all right uh, November 27th okay thank you okay. thanks thank you. thank you thanks thank you Richard thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving along uh, see water is a base what's that say later Moving along, uh, item number five is a discussion and a possible vote on liquor license violation policy. Uh, Tony Vignani's been taking the taking the lead on this whole issue uh, for a while now, and he, he's been trying to work out a, <coughs> a sensible program for us. And so, if, I'm going to turn it over to Tony to make uh, his comments and let the discussion go where it may. Sure. Uh, thank you, Joe. Um, this all was kind of prompted from what over the last <coughs> six months we've, we've had a couple of instances where we had to vote on liquor license violations. I've spoken with the chief about it a number of times and um, I decided that I was going to look into and do a little bit of research and see what other towns do. But my goal was to try and get some sort of, where well, it's actually two-tiered, get some sort of structure so that there's more of an objective measure when we have a violation and also get a better system in place in terms of the testing that we do. Um, and um, I've learned from our surrounding communities and actually across the state what some of them do um, and then in talking to the chief in terms of what funds are available and how often we do it now. Uh, but, but more along the lines, my goal would be to get stricter enforcement and stricter penalties in place so that you know, Situate doesn't have uh, the violations that we've had in the past, in summary. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit of, I mean, what we have now is a, is a draft <coughs> guideline, which in our prior discussions wasn't even really that. You know, it didn't even seem like it had any teeth at all. <coughs> um, and it was drafted about five years ago. So it, it, it seems like it's time to have it revisited. Um, let me start with my second point first. Um, and 
uh, Detective Stewart can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think now we do um, our inspections, we did it once every two years. Is that about right when we did it last year? We had done it two years before that. How, what's the frequency of our current sting operations? Compliance checks? Yes. Uh, it's according to funding. Uh, right. We had a, a grant this year. Uh, if that's available next year, or you know, yearly basis. Uh, if it's not, then it's up to the department to fund it. And the, uh, there was a five thousand dollar grant. Is that? I don't. All of it didn't go to that, no, but there was. It was less than that. It, it was actually an underage alcohol. It wasn't just compliance. Right. Gathering. Right. Yeah, How much does it cost? Uh, right. The problem with the grant was that the the duration didn't exactly fit. When our problems are, it started up about this time. We have more problems in the summertime. Than, you know, right. Uh, it actually went into the off the top of my head, I think it was around $2,500. Right. And, and uh, just a quick question. Are compliance checks built yeah. into your annual budget, or are they entirely dependent on grants? No, they're not terribly expensive. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. I guess what I would like to suggest is that, that we up it, and we do, we do it at least two a year, um, you know, during the times of years that, that the police force thinks it's going to be most applicable. Obviously, the summer is, is one of the times. Um, and, and then also, you know, I don't know how we'd get that in the budget, but we'd have to get some sort of costing estimates to see how much it would cost to, to run the operation. It seems pretty straightforward, although you have to have police force going with whoever the, um, the operant is. Um, but I think it gets done over the course of one or two nights usually. Yeah, so um, that, would, that number would be of interest, and I'm sure to Trisha too and take in terms of the budget itself. Um, the second part of the discussion is in terms of the violation and the penalties that arise from it. Um, currently, our guidelines um, say, for instance, for sale to minors with an ID, that the first offense is a one-day violation, the second offense is a five-day violation, the third offense is a 30-day violation, and the fourth offense is the license is revoked. Um, when comparing that to some of the other towns, this is actually rather strict, although we don't we don't really follow it, so it really doesn't have any uh, any real merit. Um, but for instance, the town of Norwell, the first violation is up to six days, second violation up to twelve days, and the third violation it's revoked. Um, the town of Stock uh, Southbridge, seven days up to seven days for first violation, up to thirty days for a second violation, it's revoked on the third violation. Um, Westfield, three days up to three days for the first, three to six for the second, six to 12 for the third, uh, revoked at the fourth. Um, Drake it was um, a 30 day violation for, uh, 30 days for the first violation. Um, some other ones were warnings for the first. Andover was a warning for the first violation, one to 14 for the second, and um, one to 30 for the third. So um, I guess what I'd like to err on the side of being stricter than more lenient. Um, what I also did is I went back to the ABC, ABCC website, A B C C website, and I looked at this year's, um, they have all the hearings and all the conclusions from them, and I looked at about 50 of them, and you know, that's what we're banging our head up against. If you go to the ABCC, they tend to be more lenient than, than the towns do in their penalties. But overall, it seemed like their violations were between a warning and a three-day suspension for a first one. A lot of times, as, as John has suggested in the past, they do it in abeyance, um, the ABCC does. And then the second one seemed to go up to about a seven-day limit where they also inflict any of the abe abeyances that they've held in the past. Um, so that seemed to be the guidelines for them and then the guidelines for some of the other surrounding towns. Um, what I'd like to do is take our guidelines and make them, make them whatever we think the proper violation would be and follow them um, and make them as, as strict as possible so that, um, so that we don't have any other occurrences. Um, one thing I'd like to note is that Village Market, since they came before us, has taken very positive steps. Um, there's many, many signs all over the store now that say, um, you're not going to be served if you don't have a license. So I think that, that in the case with them, 
you know, that, that the penalty that they got enforced really in, in provoked change, and that's what we want to see. You know, we just want to continue to have um, all these sting operations come back with no violations and, and um, you know, obviously not have minors being served. Rick, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, taking those two things in reverse order, as, as Tony just presented them, I too would like to see uh, this built into the budget, because no matter how small, it still has some cost. Um, and twice a year seems seems reasonable. And uh, you know, move it around obviously each year, so they don't know. Oh yeah, third week in April. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, but you know, do 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 them like that would be would be really really good. Um, and I think that would that would really help prevent a lot of um, some of this other stuff we've seen. And uh, I'm just going to offer my full support behind what Tony's suggesting here. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess I'd say maybe you should make some recommendations or, or something like that at some future point. But I, I think two things is, is let, let's get – one thing I liked about – one thing I don't like about this, this, this advisory policy now is there's no room for, for slack because I can see variation in, you know, sale to minors without ID – first offense it says five days here for example mm -hmm. and I could see where I could see a first offense would be maybe six days and I could also see a first offense might be five days with two held in abeyance or something so I'd like to see some yeah. some range I know some of the other towns as you just said have have some ranges in there so if you're, if you're putting together some guidelines for us to look at um, I'd like to see some some slight flexibility not allowing us to go too lenient though um, well, so I, I think th I think this this would be great, and uh, like you, I'd like to if we err, I'd like to, or if, if we have a range, I'd like to range on the side of of, uh, of sternness. If I just make uh, there are a few things that I meant to say. Um, a few other things that I noticed in looking at other towns is um, one of them they do do it over a, a period of time. So a lot of them have a certain number of violations within a certain number of years. Yeah. So it's not this open-ended thing. It's if you have three violations within three years, then it, you know, you kind of get your slate clean after a certain period of time. Yeah. Another one that they do is they, um, they only enforce the penalties on the weekends. So if you get a six-day suspension, it's three weekends. Um, another thing that a, a, quite a wow. few towns do is they, they do it per case, per individual. So if you serve six minors in one group, it counts as six violations. The penalty would be times six, and it would be served again. The penalties were all served on the weekends, so it could be, you know, quite a big uh, detriment if there were six people with a two-day penalty. It could be, you know, two or three months worth of penalty. So those are some things that you can incorporate into it. Um, I, I'm not prepared right now to say this is what I suggest. Sure. This is, you know, I, I, what I will do is pull that together, and I'd like to talk to the police department too and see how, how they feel about it. But I think it's before we, before we ask you to do yeah. that, let me just go to this side and sure. No, John. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was actually going <clears> to <throat> Tony first. Thank you. Um, I've looked through all of them, and uh, you've raised a lot of the points that um, I've highlighted because I'm thinking to myself. A lot of these towns, for various reasons, have come up with certain suggestions to suit their needs, which brings me back to we really don't have any forms of regulations concerning this. And I know that uh, the chief and uh, lieutenant have put together the last call, um, but I mean the reality, uh, just on a, a thing that we have here, but these are really good regulations from various towns that I think the town needs to codify and, and put into some form of regulations. And this draft policy was just a just that. It's a draft. It really is not a guideline that the board has implemented. And I think going forward, it's, in, it's important for the town, given the history of this town and the situation with um, some of the um, alcohol and some of the abuses, that we should put something in writing, and which is going to be my suggestion be, should we put a little subcommittee together? I'll be happy to, to partake on it, because I think there's a lot of information here that I think would be very beneficial to the town of Situate. Um, for example, you'd mentioned about the uh, uh, the minors. So if somebody is, there's one incident, then for each incident, if there's 10 minors, then you've got 10 incidences here. Um, and uh, you mentioned about maybe a grace period after so many months, whether it's 12 months, uh, 24 months, or 36 months, and yet um, one of them had um, something to the effect that in the event that there were prior infractions with the prior holder of this, I think that's a factor that should be factored into it decision by the board, not saying that that should be the, you know, uh, that we should have a hard and fast rule. I think flexibility of the board is important.
But I think it's important right now we don't have any guidelines and we don't have any uh, policy. So I think we should do just that. I think uh, we should propose you know, disciplinary uh, penalties. We should propose, you know, whether it's the last call and how, last call being, you know, what are the, what's the guidelines for a facility or a bar or restaurant to say this is the last time you're going to have any more drinks, clear the tables, patrons go out, end of story, places shut down. There may be a difference, though, whether it's a function hall as compared to a restaurant or a bar. And I think, you know, the various towns have gone through this and and handle them differently. And I think we've got the benefit of all these towns to maybe go through it and maybe get better regulations by comparison. So that would be my suggestion. I think you've done <coughs> a great job putting these together because, frankly, I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty comprehensive, all these things. And the violations and the infractions vary from town to town. Um, so I think, um, I think we should, something should be proposed. We should take a look at it, and then, and then we should adopt it. Ron, thank you. Thank you. I think I've heard it three times now, and I think flexibility is important. When I was reading over, I think Norwell said up to so many days. Rick touched on it, and John just did as well. Before I would vote any penalties, you know, in, in <coughs> way of violations, I'd just like to ask some of the, you know, Mike and Brian, but also some of the invite the license holders in. It's, it's an area that I'm not uh, um, an expert at. I was talking to Joe about it earlier. Someone presents a fake ID and stuff. I, you know, I mean, there are 20 years ago, it was a lot easier to duplicate, you know, to alter an ID. But I was just thinking of a couple of weeks ago when I went into a store and a girl, a local merchant, took my license and, and scanned it and showed me. You know, so things have come along so fast. And I just think I'd like to hear from some of the license holders to bring me up, educate me more, before I can make a, you know, a good decision. But go well, just one last point on that, Sean, is <coughs> what I'd like to make sure is that we can, wh when you're doing a sting operation, it's pretty clear cut. You know, it's, it's much more objective and less subjectivity in it. So a person went in, they either got right. served, they didn't get served, and that's where this penalty base can be pretty strict. You okay. know, in terms of whether there's, you know, whether they were served or they weren't served, we've heard some of those also, mm -hmm. then it gets a little bit vaguer. Right. But the town of Norwell has, you know, two or three different sets of regulations depending on the instance, right. depending on the establishment too, whether it's a, a pouring establishment or a retail establishment. Mm -hmm. So it can be, you know, you can make it tighter on some situations and, um, you know, more flexible in other situations. Okay. Great. I think, uh, Tony, if you'd be, I think what we're hearing is if you'd be willing to, to continue to do even more work on this and, and come up with a suggested suggested uh, <coughs> code or, uh, or uh, violation policy dealing with, with everything we've talked about, and you could either ask for help from the board or use a visit with the chief, whatever you want to do, get back to us. When you complete it, uh, maybe give it to the board prior to that so we could have a, t a chance to, to look at it so we wouldn't be uh, looking at it for the first time. Well, John, if you're interested. I am. Right. Yeah, and I, I think maybe what we should do is have an open meeting, too. You know, maybe meet in the sub, so, sub meeting yeah. before to get data together with the, the police yep. um, department and then have an open meeting where merchants could come and give their input as well yep. and then present Great. it after that. Is, is that something like Great idea, as a matter of fact. Yep. I, think, I, I think, you know, just to touch on the seriousness of this, and it's been the phrase <coughs> that's been overused, but I mean, there's an epidemic out there of, of abuse of alcohol and abuse of drugs. And uh, if anyone thinks we're making much to do about nothing, they, they couldn't be more mistaken because there, there is a deed, and I've heard Detective Stewart mention this years ago. It's an epidemic, and we better, we better deal with it. So that's what we'll do. If it's all right with you, Tony, thank you for taking that upon yourself. Believe me. Great. And thanks for the police chief to get all, a lot of this data together for us. Thank you all. <coughs> um, next is a vote for the turbine lease and power agreement from Al. I'll call him. There's been a change on this, uh, just on the name, I believe. Al, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. <coughs> Gentlemen. Um, I'm here tonight to recommend to the Board of Selectmen that uh, you sign a lease and a power purchase agreement with Situate Wind LLC, which is a special 
purpose affiliate of Solea Energy of Woburn. Uh, Solea, in turn, is affiliated with Loomis Construction, a large and prominent construction firm on the, on the North Shore. Uh, these agreements that, that we uh, have arrived at with them frame the economic arrangements whereby the energy company Solea constructs, owns, and operates a wind turbine on town property for the sole purpose of providing reduced cost electrical energy to us as the town. Uh, the savings <coughs> of the town over the 15 year life of these agreements will, using very conservative calculations about what the savings would be, will save the town uh, four and a half million dollars over the 15 years, roughly two, uh, $250,000 <coughs> per year on average. The background of this is in December last year, the Renewable Energy Committee, led by Paul Reedy, completed their extremely exhaustive study of uh, wind energy opportunities, and they recommended to the town through you that the town lease this piece of property next to the sewer plant to an energy company for them to fund and pay for construction of a wind turbine. At the town meeting in April, uh, the vote was, was made to lease the property for up to 25 years for this purpose. Following that, then we sent out a request for proposals, received very three, uh, three very good uh, proposals came in from the energy industry. And in late June, that same energy committee uh, studied those proposals, interviewed all the applicants, and recommended to you that uh, we begin working with Solea Energy of Woburn uh, to uh, to come to agreements on on the arrangements. Uh, the town administrator in in June then hired the attorney firm Wilmer Hale Wilmer Hale of Boston. Uh, they have a very large um, energy industry practice. They're involved in the energy industry uh, and are recognized experts in this area. We engaged them to help us negotiate a suitable lease and a power purchase agreement because this will be one of the first of a kind um, and uh, will be setting really uh, the tone for uh, other communities perhaps in Massachusetts who use town land for uh, a private firm to build a turbine to provide power to the town. <coughs> um, the agreement with Solea, which we've arrived at, is for them to design, pay for, construct, own, maintain, and operate a 1.5 megawatt wind turbine on our site right next to the sewer plant. Um, assuming that they obtain all the required permits, which includes uh, <coughs> federal aviation, uh, federal communications, um, the planning board, <coughs> um, and, uh, and the Department of Public Utilities, assuming that they, after they obtain all those permits, which will be a very public process involving an uh, again, opportunity for um, for residents to participate. Uh, the turbine uh, we project will be operational within 20 to 24 months. This puts us into about this time in the year 2011, or perhaps in the summer of 2011, so that we can begin seeing the benefit of that power saving in the fiscal year 2012. So we shouldn't budget for it yet. Thank you. Um, we, we receive the right to buy all of the energy produced at a, a very specific fixed rate. Uh, the initial rate is 8.9 cents per kilowatt hour. Currently, energy is running around 17 cents per kilowatt hour. So initially, we, we will see uh, a considerable savings. And the rate that their price increases, increases it only goes from 8.9 cents to 10.9 cents over 15 years, which is far below any projections of inflation, and particularly in the energy area. The contracts provide us with significant protections on the downside. Um, we get, uh, we've get we worked into your clauses for uh, damages if there's a late startup, in other words, payments to us if they uh, are late in starting, payments to us if their output falls below a certain level, which they will guarantee. Um, there's a penalties in there for any early termination or any demolition fees uh, will be uh, set aside in case the, the it, the turbine were to not be uh, productive or the company, their company were to fail, then there, there are rights that we have to step in and take over. We have rights of first refusal. Uh, all of the liability insurance uh, elements that the town requires are written into the contract. And then lastly, there are two possible five-year extensions of the contract <coughs> with mutual agreement. In 15 years, uh, if they and we agree that they want to go forward for another five years, there'll be another contract negotiation to determine on what basis we would go forward. Uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, the savings in energy based on today's power cost, uh, as I said, is around uh, $275,000 as, as our um, town is currently structured. About half of that savings would be for the sewer enterprise. The other half would be then applied to other town accounts. We don't have to decide on that today. That can be determined by uh, over the course of the next um, 15, 18 months, exactly where we want the credits to accrue, and and we may have to do some uh, make some changes with some of our structures so that we can have even more flexibility in applying those savings more broadly. So I would suggest uh, that you would move to vote to accept these agreements, and then in, uh, um, we'll do a, a, have a signing over the course of the next week or so. Uh, thank you all very, very much. And thank you to Paul and, and, and the entire uh, Energy Committee for the work, as Al said, that they've done over the past probably two years. Really? Uh, extremely in, intensive and, and, and haven't, missed, haven't missed much, I'll tell you. They've covered all the bases, and, the, and uh, we look to publicly thank them now for that work. Uh, Rick Murray? Yeah, just picking up on that theme. Um, I know the answer to this, Al, but I wanted to kind of get this into the record because you just told it to me. How much have you estimated the, co the town has spent on this so far? Well, I mean, if you don't count the thousands of hours of blood, sweat, and tears put into this by the Renewable Energy Committee, right. um, our total cost now is running uh, around $9,000 in attorney fees helping to organize these uh, agreements. And, and the return on that $9,000 will be 15 years worth of energy at savings of a quarter of a million dollars a year. Yeah, that, that's what you call a good rate of return. <laughs> and uh, it goes to Paul and everybody else here, Al, your group as well, t for doing that. Um, just a couple other points. Um, just to reiterate, um, Al pointed out this is a public process and it has been very, very public so far with the Renewable Energy Committee having lots and lots of meetings to get us to this point. You've had uh, several meetings and it's going to continue to be public process through all the planning board and, and so on and so forth. Um, Al's also spoken with uh, Tim Lopes of Go Green and has kept him informed and, and this lease is completely consistent with what Tim's lease is in terms of how Tim's going to handle the, the construction time and all that. And so that, that that's very important because that's something else that happened on Al's watch during uh, DPW, which has helped turn around the whole transfer station finances, as you recall, on that. So I'm very pleased to see that. And then just as a, as a um, final two points, when they decide to build these things, after they get through all the permitting, they go up really, really fast. So I just urge people to not feel like because they don't see something tangible that, that nothing's going on. Um, right outside my office down in Woods Hall, um, there's, a, uh, there's one that they built in f three and a half weeks from start to finish. And the reason is that is because the crane, which has to be, of course, taller than these things, which are quite tall themselves, the crane costs are really, really expensive. So the construction people have a very high motivation to build these things like that. So once it's all permitted and through, it's just going to just fly right on up. And uh, I'd just like to close is, um, let's get more of these too. Once we get this done and really on the way, <coughs> it takes a long time to get the, the year-long anemometer studies and so on. I'd love to see more of these in situate, particularly at that rate of return. 250000 a year for 15 years and so far, in addition to the person hours, but $10,000 or so of legal fees. That's great. Let's get more of these things. Thank, Thank you, Al. Tony? Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the readings there. I'd like to thank uh, Myron Bolick, who, who uh, yeah. checked it daily and made sure that it was <laughs> secure and uh, that the readings were accurate for, for months upon months. Um, great write-up here, Al. Just two, one question and one reiterate one point. On the five-year extension, it says mutual agreed upon. Does that mean we both have an out, or is that how it's phrased, Yes. If, if it's not working after that time period, yes. we can get out or they yes. can. And, yeah. uh, there could be several different routes. One could be uh, we, we come to an agreement and we, we want to buy the energy from them at a, at a price. Uh, if we decide we don't want to buy the energy at that price, then they have the right to go out to the marketplace and see what they can sell <coughs> it for. Um, and then we still have the right to decide that if they get, if, if the deal is better than what we wanted or we change their mind, we can buy it. At that point, so we have first rights of refusal on any sold energy. And if they sell the energy outright, then we get a share of the profits they make while selling that energy outright. 
And if wind power becomes obsolete, then they have to pay to to bring yeah, it down. And they have a they have a lot of uh, nuts in the game as well. A lot of uh, as a squirrel would, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they they're. Um, there's a lot of incentive for them to have a productive piece of equipment because remember we've got our ten thousand dollars on the line they've probably got their four million dollars on the line right, right. Um, the only other thing just to reiterate that there are a large amount of savings that are become this and and I know that you and Trish are looking into what the uses of that money could be not a discussion for now but but that um, you know that money could be used to to fund several other projects or, or operations are in the town. So w it hasn't been decided as to where that money has to be spent, but that'll be looked at over the next 20 months, I think is what you said. Thank you, Tony John. Just, just briefly, oh, um, and sorry to put you on the spot, what's the useful life of one of these um, <clears throat> windmills? Um, 25, 30 years. Okay. And last question I have. Kevin, have you ever built one of these too? <laughs> <laughs> Just get off the phone two days ago. The town engineer found it. We were talking about it, and he was telling me about the 300-ton crane they had setting it up and all the. Yeah. We're having some problems bringing the power in, how they're connecting into the grid system out there. But uh, I got the whole lowdown on that. Yeah, I, John, I think that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes. John, um, just one question on <coughs> on the um, one of your details. So. Second one, payment if the output fails below a guaranteed amount. So they are that confident that they're going to get enough wind? They will guarantee us 3 million kilowatt hours a year, and that's the basis that I've made the um, analysis on. If um, th uh, 3 million kilowatt hours a year would be, if you would take this turbine, if you would spin it every day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, mm -hmm. Uh, it would produce uh, 14 million kilowatt hours. Okay, the calculation we're using is 3 million kilowatt hours, which is 22% of max output. Uh, and, and they're willing to, say, to stand behind that they can produce that much energy as a floor. If in the course of a year they don't produce that much energy, um, even because the wind's not blowing, um, then, then uh, we're covered. Okay. They would so prefer not to. They would prefer to make more than the 3 million kilowatt hours, and, and we would prefer that they do that too. Our load is, is greater than that. We could stand several of these 3 million mm -hmm. kilowatt hour projects. Right. And it's, <clears throat> I think I know the answer to it. So in lieu of any rental money, we just get a, a reduced rate, energy rate. Yes. That's it. We chose to put everything into the energy rate um, as opposed to putting it into the lease. If we put it into the lease, yeah, then we'd have a higher energy rate. It's yeah, just it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's cleaner this way. I think that was it. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, before, I, before I ask for a motion, I just want to, and Sean will probably appreciate this, you know, I just wouldn't want to see this occasion go by without mentioning a, 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 an individual who probably, believe it or not, eight to ten years ago, every time you saw Paul O'Brien, you, you, it, whether it be a church, at village market, at the landfill, no matter where it was, uh, long before any of us were even thinking about it. In fact, it was, it was Don Quixote type thinking, actually, on his part, at least in many of our eyes. Uh, uh, Paul has since passed away, unfortunately, but I just didn't want to let, let this uh, occasion go by without mentioning him and mentioning the... Uh, uh, the hard work that he did a long time ago, getting this seed planted in many of our minds, even when we didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, it, it, I just want to. That is so true. Uh, I can remember him I right just here. make note of that, that's all. Motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the lease and power purchase agreement with Situate Wind LLC for a 15 year period with two possible extensions of five years based upon mutual agreement by both parties. Second. Further discussion from the board from the floor? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you, Al. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Kevin. Moving right along. Uh, number seven is to the, uh, um, a motion to ratify the uh, appointment of uh, a field coordinator. 
And we'll take a, a motion on that. So uh, there's no do we need it? Trish just, Trish asked, just it. asked that uh, that be brought to our attention because it's a, a new a new appointment. Do you want to read the memo? Read the memo. Sure. In accordance with Section 4-2B of the Charter of Situate, this is from uh, the Town Administrator, by the way, I'm informing the Board that I have appointed Paul Sherry of Situate to the new uh, position of Field Coordinator for the Rec Department. Done. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward and, and, and offering your time. We appreciate that. There you go, Paul. Can I, I just want to, <clears throat> can I just say something that uh, sure as liaison is uh, to the Recreation Commission, um, it's a great appointment. Paul has put a ton of time in and mm -hmm. uh, happy to see him in this position. I'm sure he'll do a great job for the town. The town's lucky to have a person like Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. And Joe, I just want to say that typically you won't see these as agenda items, but since it was my first appointment, you'll get a memo in the future that's mm -hmm. filed with the board for the 10 days as per the 15 days as per the charter. Right. But since Paul was the first pancake, I thought. Uh, I haven't kicked around enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had an excellent applicant pool, and um, um, I think um, the town will be happy with its choice. I'm sure we will. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Tricia, a vote to a re just an explanation on this on the disbanding of the Television Grand Committee and also maybe the following appointing a cable television committee. If you could just touch on those things. Sure. Um, previously, we discussed at Sleckman's meeting about um, the obsolescence, for lack of a better word, of the negotiating committee now that the cable contract um, is in place for another. Uh, long period of time so what we discussed sort of generally at that time was taking the two committees and merging them into one but giving them a rather more directed charge as it relates to getting a cable studio up and going developing programming appropriate equipment with funds available um, from the cable studio subscriber fees that come to the town and other funds that the board would look at annually under the budget so um, what um, these two items on your agenda do is disband the two former committees, merge them into one, and set the appointment process for um, some members and solicitation of new members. Thank you. We've talked about this before, so this is, uh, this is the result. So the motion to the board, our discussion, whatever pleases the board. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to disband the Cable Television Grant <coughs> Committee and the Cable Television Advisory Committee, and further that the Board thank the members of these committees for volunteering their time and expertise to the Town of Situate. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> That's unanimous. Next. Uh, again, this is the appointment of the new committee, as Trisha, Trisha just explained. Move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Monty Newman, Richard Long, Vincent, Col Vincent Calicious, and Patricia Vincasey to the Cable Television Committee. Second. Uh, discussion. Yeah, just, Tony. One, just one point. Um, I, I was the uh, Selectman that was on the negotiating committee and the liaison to the other one. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably a good idea for a Selectman to be on this committee in a voting capacity. I don't know how if we should change the motion to do that or not or just, just, um, just include it now. yep we can yeah. just include it and or that could be one of the three i'm not saying to replace one of these no, four people but there's three people at large that can be on there. do we have a volunteer i think anthony vignani would be an excellent choice mm -hmm. uh, well seeing his <laughs> list <laughs> Unless one of you, like, we're, we're to the point now where the committee, the, the financial part of it has kind of been figured out, and now they're really working on content mm -hmm. and distribution and production. Okay. So if any of you guys have much more experience or interest in that than I do, you can. All right. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds like. Uh, I would be happy to do it unless. Uh, well, I mean, you, you did all the finest. I mean, I, w I was it before you were, and you've done it for the last couple of years, so why don't we trade it back? Sure. All right, Mr. Murray has volunteered. <coughs> so, uh, should do a remote? Uh, once, would you, I'll tell you what, let's just make it clear. Why don't we just uh, make a new motion? That'd be all right. Uh, would somebody send the 
Sure, I will send the, mo uh, the, the motion okay, that I just uh, second. issued. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor of sending the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Now, the new motion, including Mr. Murray. I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Monty Newman, Richard Long, Vincent Calicious, Patricia Vincasey, and Richard Murray to the Cable Television Committee. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations to all the new members. Thank you. Put it on my resume right away. Put it on your resume. Uh, agenda item number 10, budget calendar timetable. Uh, as we were given last Saturday uh, at a working meeting uh, all Saturday morning, timetable uh, <coughs> which was put together for the presentation of the budget that will result in the budget being presented to town meeting in, in May, but it starts now. And this would be a vote to accept that timetable that Trisha gave us then and is in front of us now. So uh, take a motion and then if there's any discussion, we'll discuss it. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote the fiscal year 2011 budget calendar timetable as presented by the town administrator. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the timetable? I guess the question would be, I know the answer, but you've gone to the other committees and they've all, advisory committee yep. has seen this and, uh, and agreed with it. Uh, one, of the, um, <clears throat> one of the changes that occurred is that we had kind of worked for years to do it, um, to have the Board of Selectmen excuse me, have the advisory do it before the Board of Selectmen, and now we're kind of reversing that back. As the uh, town administrator said, that's the, the proper way for it to be done. Um, but just to know that you guys are aware of that and, and support that. Mm -hmm. And then capital planning, I'm on that committee, and I know they're aware of this as well. And then also there's been one minor change. One of these committee, one of the one of the boards uh -huh. has, has switched to a time from one month to the next, but overall this is fine. Uh, Further discussion, Norman? You can make that public? You can have it right now. Okay. Uh, right at the end of the, you can have it now. Um, yes, it will be public. It is public, Norman. You can have it. All right, a motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item, agenda item number 11, is the vote to set the polls for the for the state primary, uh, the special election that will be held in December. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to set the poll hours for the state primary from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on December 8, 2009 at the high school gymnasium. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seven to eight. That's going to be a long day. Huh? Wow. Do we know when absentee money. ballots are going to be? Uh, do we know when absentee ballots are going to be ready? Probably ready. Probably ready now. No, I need to get one. I'll find out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, next item is the always important uh, town administrator report. <clears throat> Thank you. It's getting a little longer. I hope that's not a bad sign. Um, first item that you have is I'm actually really pleased to tell the board about this since it's been sitting <coughs> in reserve for a few weeks. Um, what I've done working with Tom Rose is created an internet site for town of situate municipal employees as distinguished from an internet site. This is password and username protected and what it allows uh, me to do is instead of inundating department heads and staff with blast emails all the time, um, every employee can go onto the site and find out event information, policies, directives, and um, other recent um, events or whatever that's coming up to get information out. And I did include a copy of the welcome and the home page for you with the various attachments set up. Most notable is the fact that all of the budget instructions and materials are up on this internet site. So when we did the budget instructions that went out to department heads November uh, 5th, 
all of the forms and everything are downloadable to go into the this internet site and work off of them. And employees are obviously encouraged to send information, um, or if the board has information they would like to get out to the town staff, boards and committees, this is a vehicle by which to do it. Um, as I think we've talked before, in general terms, the town has a number of technology challenges. <coughs> so we're really um, ahead in terms of state of the art and having all this in electronic format. And um, folks will go into budget sense. There's templates for the narrative, new narrative sections of the budget. As you received on Saturday, uh, the budget process has changed considerably, and the vehicle through which folks access this is, is on the internet site. So um, just wanted to share that with you. And you have the code and password um, in the budget instructions that you got. So it's right on the front page. Um, and that sort of segues into the second piece on the report, which is the new budget format. And not to get into too much detail, but um, it is decidedly different. Um, I think th we had a very long meeting that staff attended to Farming Heads. Uh, we did two hours on goals and setting and goals and objective setting, which will be a required inherent part of the budget now. Um, the budget is going to be much more of a document and a roadmap that talks about the town and the services, programs, and activities that it provides. And um, obviously, you just approved the new timetable. And uh, I'd like to see Bob DiLorenzo and Eric and Joe, who attended a meeting to sort of go through all these dates and timelines. We have one of the earliest town meetings in the Commonwealth. And that presents some unique challenges and also the fact that I'm new and getting a little late started in terms of the whole sequence of events but I think the budget calendar gets us where we need to be as Tony mentioned there's been a change the board will review all the budgets before they go to advisory the schedule rolls so somebody sees the board on a Tuesday they immedi immediately go Thursday night to the advisory committee. The board won't vote the budget this year as it's presented to them. They'll wait till they say all departmental budgets and then vote them in total. And the <coughs> calendar is designed to Thank also you. allow Sorry. the advisory committee and the capital planning committee to meet their um, charter and bylaw deadlines. And um, as I said, the department heads are um, doing well so far and they've all been very cooperative and supportive um, this is a, a new process for everybody I expect it will have some kinks and bumps in the roads um, but I think I'm confident that the final product you get on December 15th for your meeting will will be more information than you probably want to weed through so um, <laughs> that's all I have there I'm happy to answer any questions the Next item is the <coughs> financial trend monitoring. This is the fourth month, and as you can see, we're pretty much keeping steady to some revenue and expenditure trends that um, we've talked about in previous meetings. As I note, the fire department over time is tracking and trending very high over FY09, but as I note in my narrative here and speaking with Chief Judge, we did to have firefighters off on injured on duty. They're back to work. I expect you'll see a downward trend in the overtime for fire when you get the November report. Unemployment uh, continues to increase each month. It was 29,000 for the month of uh, October, which I don't think is reported here because we just got the bill earlier this week. Um, s but um, we did address that anticipated increase at the special town meeting in November, er, November 2nd. So I'm, I'm comfortable with, with where we're going in terms of expenditure to appropriation through <coughs> And uh, again, happy to answer any questions on that. Uh, a quick o couple quick points there. <coughs> Transfer station is running about $33,000 above on the revenue side through October, <coughs> which is very good. And uh, Widow's Walk is running a little bit below above Ten or fifteen thousand dollars below revenue um, through October, and all of them are, are pretty close. You know, the the only dramatic one, like you said, was was the overtime and the fire, which you've addressed. So, um, 
they look like we're tracking the budget pretty closely. Um, the one, two, three, fourth and last item on the um, town administrative report is discussion, uh, initial discussion with the board about an ESCO project. Uh, since the uh, en Renewable Energy Committee did such a bang up smack and job on the wind turbine, we're ready to have them take over another project, which is an ESCO project. ESCO is an acronym for Energy Savings Contract. Um, this is something you may have heard about since other communities are doing it now. Um, I had some direct experience at, when I was working with the city of Springfield. W essentially what um, the scenario would play out here if we were to move forward was that a baseline audit of every town and muni um, municipal and school facility invitation for all items and any items related to energy. Roofs, windows, boilers, HVAC systems, um, solar, G, uh, thermal, and that baseline audit is conducted by a company <laughs> that the town would select by competitive bid process. And once that contract was awarded to the company, the baseline audit would reveal um, if X a number of improvements were made in these facilities, the savings would be rechanneled into capital improvements to fund those identified efficiencies and savings. This would require town meeting approval. The town would essentially have to set aside the funds to do the baseline audit in the event that the audit was done and the company found that they could not get a return on their investment uh, from because our systems were efficient and state of the art or whatever. I'm rather confident that would not be the case. <laughs> um, however, I just want to make sure, you know, we go into this with our eyes open. I met at length with the Renewable Energy Committee about this last week, gave them sample RFPs from three communities. They have agreed to review them and draft an RFP for the town. There. Um, also, we'd have to gather s a lot of data that we don't have in one place right now uh, to include in the RFP so we could paint a picture of the town as far as electrical usage and things like that. The Renewable Energy Committee has volunteered to do those kind of analysis for us if once we, we're providing them a month's bill of electricity from all facilities. We have the towns. We expect the schools by the end of this week. The accounting office has done some good work manually pulling all those bills out. Um, so my timetable obviously is to have an article for town meeting. There are state funds available. This, this is where your stimulus money is for a municipality, which um, I think we've all come to see is very limited at the local level. Uh, there are grants available for the baseline audit, but I chose not to pursue those because the bigger grant money is available once you go into actual capital improvements so we can um, really, I think, uh, leverage those funds much to a much greater degree um, and do something sooner than later if we get grant funds and are successful. Um, so again, you'll be hearing more about this, but I just um, wanted to share with the board and, and tell you that the Renewable Energy Committee endorsed the concept as well. And that's all I have under the town administrator's report. Thank you. That's all encompassing. Um, <coughs> under other business, Sean, do you want to start off? Yeah. <coughs> I'd like to publicly thank, and I don't want to name names because I'm afraid I will miss somebody, the police officers and the firemen who literally saved a woman's life the other night. I, as I understand, the police officers did not wait for the fire department to come. They saw the need to get this person out or the consequences would have been uh, disastrous. They went in the house, removed the person, and made a... Uh, uh, very good save. I'd just like to thank uh, the, the men and women that were on duty, the police and fire, and like I said, Trisha, I, you might be able to name them. I, I, I don't know for fear that I'll skip somebody. They know who they are, and thank you. They do a great job every day, but this is uh, above and beyond. Thank you. That's all, Joe. Thank you, John. Uh, Joe, briefly, just the uh, Special Bylaw Review Committee is um, 
We're going to be meeting again uh, later this month, the end of the, um, actually the beginning of December, um, and probably will be coming up promulgating um, proposed changes to the zoning bylaw, which will be circulated once it's been formalized. That uh, special bylaw committee will disband, and the bylaw review committee is, um, has convened and will be in attendance, and then from there it will be brought to the Board of Selectmen, to the advisory, and to everybody in preparation for um, uh, the town meeting. So just to give a heads up, that's in the works. It's going forward, so we'll be getting some more information shortly. And that's thank, it. Thank you, Rick Murray. Um, <clears throat> yeah, two quick things. Uh, I'd also just like to thank Trisha's office as well as Gary Carla's office for the, the nice wreaths and so on that were placed around town on uh, November 11th on uh, Veterans Day. That was a nicely done obviously on a very important holiday and I just wanted to to acknowledge that also I wanted to bring to the board's attention um, just a little thing from the well actually a pretty big thing from the water resources committee you may have seen some announcements from Jeff Rosen's group there um, that the modeling study is nearing its conclusion that they've been working with state agencies on and local agencies on in terms of tracking water flow throughout the various aquifers reservoirs wells ponds and so on and so this has been about a two or three year endeavor and uh, it's come together very very well and probably sometime in January uh, Mr. Rosen and the Water Resources Committee might be coming before us to give us a sort of a, a bottom line what it is but with this model we're going to be able to do a much better prediction of, of uh, water drawdown from our various resources as well as water replenishment as a function of precipitation changes um, and so on and so forth. It's going to be a very good tool for us all um, in the future. Just wanted to update everybody as to where that was coming. Thank you very much. Tony? Um, yeah, just a couple quick things. On a lighter note, um, youth football has come to an end this year, and I want to thank all the coaches and all, all of the uh, participants for helping all the juniors there. Um, I know of two teams in particular that went uh, to the finals this past weekend, um, the fourth graders went out to Br uh, Bridgewater and played their game. And by the way, they have a tremendous cheering staff. The cheerleaders are excellent. Um, and they uh, lost a tough game. And then the seventh graders played right here uh, last Sunday afternoon, and they won, and they are the, uh, the champions for uh, their age bracket. So kudos to those two teams. And again, thanks for all those people that participated. So what did they do on fourth and two? They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they went for it. Why would they go for it? Um, and the last one. Just a, a, a quick update, uh, we're getting to the holiday season and Community Christmas is gearing up for a busy season. Um, they help those families that are, have financial burden over the, uh, over the um, holiday season. And um, just a few quick things, they, they, uh, they pretty much hold the Knights of Columbus um, full for the next several weeks. Um, and some of their needs are for kids, uh, baby diapers, board games, school supplies, toddler clothing, and those types of things. They do tremendous work. Um, and you can drop it off the Knights of Columbus every day between 12 and 3 or 7 and 9 in the evening. So anything that you can give to help these um, families is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Tony. Uh, next item is correspondence. I don't believe we have any. No, so no we we'll, don't. We'll no. move on to the minutes. Would the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes from November 2nd, 2009? Second. second. Oh. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion from the board from the floor. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Finally, the adjournment. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 8.29 p.m. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Good night, folks. And happy Thanksgiving. I don't think we'll be meeting before then, will we? No. No. Happy Thanksgiving to the town from the board. And that is it. Thank you. Can I say good night, folks?